All right, so finally we got Uma. Oh, love this so much. Synesthete, Parisian perfumer, painter, and poet, Stefan Imberluca studied painting in the south of France with a Flemish master and specialized in the temper technique where he was obsessed with the combination of pigments and their texture. No wonder he creates fragrances that are very well layered and nuanced. Convinced that every color had a scent and a specific sound, he discovered his synesthesia, a perceptual phenomenon in which the stimulation of his sight and hearing simultaneously triggers his sense of smell at the same time. Mixing colors and sounds was then a way to master new unique scents. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And today we finally are going to review one of the most anticipated fragrances from Stefan Umberluca from his 7-7 collection, Uma, a mastery of contrasts with this exquisite oud from Myanmar and three kind of high quality roses. All right, so a lot of people think that this will be another rose and oud fragrance review. But I have to say, actually, interestingly, Uma, at least to me, and Mr. Luca, it's far away from your typical oud and rose fragrance. This is a very special blend and creation from Stefan Umberluca and is one of the most costly fragrances right alongside Ohira in his collection. Uma by Stefan Umberluca from his 7-7 collection falls under Amber Woody category and it was launched in 2013. So it has been around for eight years already. And for a fragrance with a DNA that old, let me tell you, this smells extremely modern and smoothly blended. And of course, the nose behind Uma is Mr. Stefan Umberluca himself. For Mr. Luca, Uma is rather religious. It is a chic medicinal scent done with the precision of a watch, suit from wood, as fine as grounded alabaster with fluid mechanics, adjusted and persistent, magicians of clarinet and oboe melodies. And those were exactly his words, by the way. He also talked about how Uma is meant to represent heaven and earth with the dark balsamic resins intended to act as concrete foundation for the more mystical, spiritual, and abstract elements like the Cade, which he used in order to add a Baroque touch to this creation. He also talked about how Uma is meant to represent heaven and earth, with the dark balsamic resins intended to act as a concrete foundation for the more mystical, spiritual, and abstract elements like the Cade, which he used in order to add a Baroque touch to this creation. In other words, for Monsieur Luca, Uma is not meant to be your stereotypical oud and rose fragrance. It's supposed to represent more of an abstract, spiritual, finely tuned, multifaceted, and multi-personality, woody, smoky, tar-like, at times, heavenly scent. The interesting part during the conversation with Monsieur Luca was that he really never emphasized roses in his discussions with me about Uma. He mostly talked about the oud and the cade in Uma and what a big role these two played while he was creating this heavenly fragrance. And I think that is an important point for him because he didn't want Uma to be categorized as another floriental scent or another typical rose and oud or even rose oud and saffron combo. Uma, in fact, is another multifaceted and morphing type of a scent that definitely goes under otherworldly category due to its multiple personalities. All right, let's get to the accords of Uma and see what we get as far as the accords goes. Make sure you stick to the my video and check out the unboxing of this gorgeous bottle. All right, so let's spray some of this and see what we get. So heavenly. 
this is so, so sophisticated. So different. It's when you smell this, you're not going to think oud and roses. This is very different. All right, so Uma opens up very leathery, almost like the saddle horse type of a smell that is sometimes sour or sometimes sweet. It's gorgeous. It has this singed woods that is musky. I get a strong whip of mesquite, which is gorgeous as well. The oud is not barnyardish, but rather sour and leathery type of an oud. Now, some might say, it has a medicinal type of a oud smell to it, but for me, it has more of like a saddle horse type of a oud. It's just so refined, so well done. The oud is definitely there. It's very pungent, but again, I'm going to keep repeating myself. It's very well tamed and refined at the same time. At times, I get this intense, tar-like, woody, dry, smoky, phenolic odor from this beauty, which reminds me of mesquite woods that have been lightly singed. I also get this dusty, leathery, soft, earthy, hay-like, reminding slightly of rubber, which is from Zaffron. As the fragrance opens up, I also get hints of dry red rose mixed with jasmine that is buried deep within the woods, which complements the fresh balsamic, slightly herbaceous and glorious dark balsamic and resinous heart of this mysterious multifaceted scent. As it opens up more, it loses its sourness and becomes slightly sweet, not as sweet as Royal Oud by Armani Privé. Why do I compare that with Royal Oud? Let's just say spray them side by side and you will understand me. This sweet amber and amalic balsamic profile must be coming from Tolu Balsam. The intense woody coniferous aromatic ambery nuances is definitely coming from Peru Balsam, which makes the fragrance very resinous. Again, even though a slight hint of sweetness is coming through Uma, it still keeps its raw primal leathery horse saddle smell, which is slightly honeyed. As time passes, Uma lightens up a lot and becomes very dry, powdery, earthy, aromatic, woody, and very light floral. Now the floral becomes very interesting because it doesn't smell like roses. You get more of a faceted light floral nuance here, which is so sophisticated and masterfully done to a point where it almost feels like a pink soft iris floral note. As time passes, Uma lightens up a lot and becomes very dry, powdery, earthy, aromatic, woody, and very light floral. Now the floral becomes very interesting because it doesn't smell like roses. You get more of a faceted light floral nuance here, which is so sophisticated and so masterfully done to a point where it almost feels like a pink, soft iris floral note. As the fragrance gets into its mid dry down, something interestingly happens and that's when I say the fragrance starts to morph. As it dries down, the fragrance becomes smoky and almost tar-like type of a smell, which must be decay kicking in. It has this slightly turpentine, phenolic, oily undertone. So Decade has this oily feel to it, as I mentioned earlier, which blows my mind how this soft, airy fragrance is turning into this smoky, Cade-like smell, and the oud smells now more like a burning oud. It almost smells like you are burning the actual auger wood, or I should say like Bahur. At this point, there is no hints of any facets of floral going on, but more of pure smoky oud and smoky Cade. The fragrance still smells of a singed woods, but not as strong as initially sprayed. Again, the oud in here is clean and very well tamed, nothing to be scared of. Also, the smokiness is extremely balanced and very sophisticated. It is just masterfully created. 
Now, at the last stage of dry down, Uma morphs once again for last time, and it will completely blow your mind. It loses all its smokiness of Cade and Oud, and it becomes a light, gorgeous, woody, soft, leaning almost towards feminine side, light pinkish amber with floral facets from rose and jasmine, which actually represents more of a pink iris type of a smell, accompanied with this beautiful pink musk, which is powdery and slightly sweet. So all in all, what you get with Uma, it has this beautiful amber that morphs constantly from smoky animalic amber into this dry woody amber and then into a pinkish floral sweet powdery amber and stays constantly dry. So the amber cord is not fluid, but rather a dry amber cord throughout its morphism. Uma is definitely very woody. Uh, you can definitely smell the oud in here. It is balsamic and there's this hint of rose and jasmine which give off this almost like iris facet. It is powdery, warm, spicy, earthy, smoky at points, slightly sweet and white floral musky. All right, so let's get to the notes of Uma and see what we got. Top notes, we have rose, jasmine. Middle notes, we have tulu balsam, peru balsam, Cade and Zaffron. Base notes, we have Oud, Cipri oil, and Cedar. All right, so let's get to the performance and longevity. As far as the performance and longevity goes, in the long run, it is a soft performer. But as far as the uh, lasting power goes, on my skin, I get about eight to nine hours. And now uh, the skin scent on my skin, it's very strong with this fragrance. So it stays very strong. So as far as the performance and longevity goes, I would give it a medium to high score. All right, so as far as the projection sillage goes, it has a moderate to strong sillage and it only goes that way for two hours and then it gets close to your bubble. And that is because it is an extrait de parfum. So as far as the projection sillage goes, I would give it a medium score. All right, so let's talk about compliments. As far as compliments goes, this one is a beauty. Now, um, again, we're talking about Stephen Umerluca. Uh, it's very artistic type of a scent, but it's so well layered. It's so well nuanced and it definitely morphs a lot. So uh, it has, different phases that you go through so it depends at what phase someone will smell you according to that uh, you might get a lot of compliments or you might not uh, i would say when it gets to its dry down uh, it definitely gets more compliment and it becomes more mass appealing so as far as the compliments goes it's a little bit tricky with this one it's a little bit complicated but all in all it is a gorgeous gorgeous fragrance i love uma uma is just so beautiful and that's why i waited so long to uh, review this fragrance because i wanted to really understand and study it and ask all my questions from stephanie berluca and to me, it's just a beauty. It's actually beauty and the beast. It opens up like a beast and uh, you kind of uh, get that pungent oud vibe from it. And then it turns into this gorgeous, beautiful fragrance. So as far as the compliments goes, I would give it a medium to high score. All right, so let's get to the versatility of Uma, which can be very tricky. And, uh, you know, versatility is very subjective. But Uma is like one of those fragrances that you can wear all year long, actually. Even though it does have uh, strong notes in it, it does have that smokiness, it has oud in it, it has that cade oil type of effect to it. But because it constantly morphs and it changes into this light floral type of a scent, the powdery, the pinkish vibe to it, and that gorgeous amber, I would say you can actually pull this off during summertime as well. So I would say you can definitely wear Uma all year round, interestingly. Now, as far as where to wear this, I would say this is a very sophisticated fragrance, and I would say this would be great for very luxurious parties or a night out with your friends or significant other, it would do fantastic. And it definitely demands uh, dressing up for this fragrance. So as far as the versatility goes, I would give it definitely a high score with this. All right, so let's get to uniqueness of Uma. 
again, we are talking about a, um, a rose and oud fragrance. But as I mentioned in this video, which took a very long time to explain this fragrance, this is not your typical oud and rose fragrance. You definitely have to explore this for yourself to understand what a unique, beautiful creation Uma is. So as far as the uniqueness goes, I would definitely give Uma a very, very high score. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for Uma. If you own this fragrance, please let me know in the comment section what's your take on it. And if you don't own it, I'm telling you, this one is an easy blind buy. Even though it has oud in it, it has kate oil in it, but it turns into this beautiful, gorgeous fragrance. So if you give it time and you let it sit, you will see how beautiful it becomes. And that's it, you guys. That's all I have. Thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye. Yeah.